what we did, I don't think anyone. Mm. It was mental. And I just knew from that their hearts were broken <coughs> for that minute. It's a few seconds, bro. Yeah, it's <laughs> seconds, bro. I, I wouldn't have kicked it out, so. <laughs> so you're attracting that now. Yeah. Turkey at the Euros this summer, Euro 2024. I mean, a, a lot of people, or they should know, you played in integral part in Turkish football history at mm. the European Championships, a massive part. 2008, you get to that semi final. We get to the specifics of that match because you had a lot to say after the game as well with, <laughs> with what went down, Philip Lahm. Um, but, <laughs> <laughs> but, but for now, like, just talk, me, talk to me about that tournament as a whole. And well, actually, first, what was it like kind of building up to that tournament? Because you had a, it was a great, a great summer. Yeah, so the build up to that tournament come off the back of me having a good last six months at Fenerbahce. Um, Obviously, we got to the Champions League quarterfinals. I scored, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. We nearly took the league, etc. It was like a, a, a an awakening for me because we just finished the season, and like four or five days later, we went straight into camp. Right. So we was in camp like from start to finish, maybe two months, two and a half months, like like because of the whole tournament, right? So we went and. We stayed, literally, we stayed in Antalya, then we stayed in some place in Germany, and then we went over to, to Switzerland, so we stayed literally in camp with no days on. Is that a Turkish-specific thing, or is that just the reality of the Euros? No, nah, because if you see the others this year, they had, I think, like, two or three weeks That's off. Right. right, okay. okay. I mean, do and you think, do you think so like, what do you think's better? Because you see going, like, straight from season to, to tournament, going into the camp, but then you've got, like, you see some players, like, go on a little little trip with their, with their missus for a week and go yeah. on holiday, and, like, is it better for the mentality to just go... Boom, straight in. Yeah. Do you think? Relax before the Euros or just <coughs> like go get, on a little holiday going. or just don't stop. Bomb. Straight. Me, I, I think, I personally think that you go straight in. Yeah. So you got two, three days, obviously, because people yeah. got some little whatever. And then go straight in. But whoever's the coach of the national team has to understand that the families need to come, yeah. see their people, kids come around. You have your set days that you're allowed to. Maybe your family are on the other side of the hotel. Like I'm talking before before tournament. Right, right before tournament so you're in like the camp stage or whatever see your kids because me I was a guy that I, I was very relaxed and at home it's not no stress for me to be at home like, before a game right, okay. you know some people say oh we want to go into the hotel before the game I understood it both ways so I didn't have a problem but I like I like that going straight in because you're straight you're still on your football focus you're still on your Right, you understand what you have to do. You understand. With, with the families and that, was was Fatih Selim, was he was he like was was he good at that? Like going very good at that. Or? That's what he was very good at. People don't understand he's man to man management. Yeah, he's second to none. It's uh, crazy. I love his passion on the side <coughs> of the pitch. Like when I was watching, and that, that's what everyone takes from it though. They exactly. take that he's a disciplinarian, right? right? And like he's like a dictator or something. Let me tell you something. The guy. He does that to take all the pressure for him, to put everything on him. And yeah, he likes the media and etc. right? He does. Cool, why not? But behind, he knows everything. He understands, you know what? You have a rest today. Yeah. Go and see your kids. Tell your kids to come. I don't know. Go to the, go to the, because in, in Antalya, for example, there's water slide. He, he's very good at doing that. Going into that kind of, that well, that group stage as well, you had some tough opponents. Like, mm. You know, Portugal, we spoke about it earlier off camera, but like, that Portugal team was was mad at the time. Ronaldo's winning Ballon d'Ors, you know, like yeah. they got some big players in there. Czech Republic, Switzerland as well. It so, talks to me like, were you, were you, did you go into that tournament as like, was it underdogs or because they they had a successful couple of tournaments before that Turkey as well. Mm. Sum up the group stage for me. I know it's a lot of games, but did, how did you look back on that? Listen, Turkey go into every every game wanting to win, yeah. right, with that mind frame because that's that's being. That's being Turkish, ain't it? Like, you understand? It's egotistical egos, and yeah, we're the, we're the best, and we're the greatest thing. We our baklava is better than anyone else's baklava. <laughs> you understand? Like our kebabs are, our kebabs, like do you understand what I'm saying? Yeah. Like our food is the best, and our country is beautiful, and etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. So every game we go in, we go to try and win. It's been proud, you know. Yeah, very proud. Which which is an amazing thing to be, right? But. What we did, I don't think anyone really, like the, the way we did it, especially with the Turkish fans, you got to remember like, we was in Switzerland, Austria, if anyone knows how many Turkish people was in Switzerland, Austria, <laughs> Germany, it was literally like we was at home. Wow. Like, we played against Switzerland and three quarters of the stadium 
It's Turkish. It's Turkish. It's Even in with the Swiss fans, like, <laughs> Turkish fans. <laughs> what, the, the, what, the Swiss fans were Turkish? <laughs> yeah, like, <laughs> listen, crazy. And Turkish fans, they'll be in the middle of whoever with their with their shirt on. It don't matter. Like, <laughs> it's crazy, right? So going into that tournament was a thing like we 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 always believed we could do well, but going to the semi final and really like the first half absolutely dominating. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah, yeah. I, I say that straight, we absolutely dominated. You did, you did. You did. In the first half. But Germany are Germany. Germany are so regimented, stick to their plans. And no matter what you do, they always have that belief listen, it's going to come, it's coming, it's coming. And that's what happened. They had three chances and scored three goals. Yeah, yeah. And exactly. ruthless as well. Um, but the first game was like a real eye opener for us. Wow. I think that was good to get that game out of the way. Portugal with. All those stars. I think that Portugal team was was a very very good Portuguese team. Yeah, I'm looking at the results and uh, it screams like comeback kings. You get in your second game ninety. Like, so you lose to Portugal in the first game for people that don't know. Yeah. Ninety second minute winner in the next game. Other two and scores against Czech Republic. Mm -hmm. the, the the last game as well. We got goals in the 87th and 89th minutes. Yeah. You were two on down. Then it's two goals in the last well couple of moments. Of that's the game. that's like the Ottoman Empire in you, right? <laughs> never, <laughs> never never say that. No. I'm, I'm telling you, like there was a minute in that game where they they don't believe that they could do it. Yeah. You understand? Yeah. Um, I think it's more of like a yeah we should have concentrated a bit more at the start, right. and it takes us to like kind of get slapped in the face a little yeah. bit to kind of wake up. Um, but in other sports, some of the greats. That's how they start. They start off slow. It's an eye opener. You know? Yeah, and, I mean, Argentina, they lost to what, it Saudi Arabia at the last World yeah. Cup. They're going to win the tournament. Spain. Yeah. They lost the opening game. All the big teams know how to lose to come back and go on to do good. Yeah, and, that, and that's the thing. you you got to remember, no matter where Turkey play in Europe, they're going to make it feel like they're at home as well, which is yeah. good good for us when we're playing. Especially now in Germany. It's going to be it's gonna be crazy. Like, I see, I see what's, what's his name? The Napoli uh, winger. He was talking today about Georgia, right? Mm. I just don't know. I just don't... Don't get me wrong, Georgia's going to be very difficult to yeah. break down, right? Mm. But I just don't think they understand, like, the lead-up to it, the day of the game, going to the stadium, inside the stadium, like, it's going to be 90% <coughs> Turkish fans. You get through those group stage games, you finish, like, level on points with Portugal. Mm. Same points as Portugal, six points. That's, that's a way to reply. You then, so back then, 16 teams in the whole tournament. Yeah. Mm. Like, how, like, how do you feel about that as well? Because, I mean, like, the immediate impression is, and this is this is ignorant, but it's like, well, you've missed the whole round. you missed the whole game, but, like, and you're straight into the quarterfinals, but does it make it harder with those less teams? you got to remember, with less teams, it's literally the best teams. Yeah. yeah. From that year. Less qualifying. Or from the, that year, from that qualifying, yeah. however long, two years, whatever it is, right? They're the best teams that are in there. Not no teams that maybe came third, not no teams that have the best third place or whatever it might be. It's literally the best teams and then only two teams go through. Yeah. So you're straight in, in the group stage, it's like a knockout stage. Exactly. You're straight you're straight into it. You have to win every right? year, there's no second chances. There's no second chances, right? Um, where I feel like maybe now, not the top top nations, but some of them might think, yeah, you know what, if we get three draws. Yeah. Yeah, we possibly could go through third place. I mean, the other thing is like, because it opens up two extra groups, it's also like there's m more qualifying spots. And I'm you're saying. talking about the Euros where you got to the semi finals. England weren't there. No. Because there's qualify. only 16 spots. You know, you need you need to finish top or your group and all mm. you're screwed. It That's was a crazy reality. It was Croatia. So you like, for, for England fans, a lot of them would find it hard to accept that England aren't in the top 16 teams in the world, uh, in Europe. Like, that's yeah. Not in the world. Not in, in the world, in, yeah. In, in Europe as well. But yeah, because people don't understand that like, international football is so different. Mm -hmm. It's not like club football. And it's tough. And you go into places, and everybody now, anyway, now set up well. Like, look at England against Iceland. Yeah. Like two weeks ago, well, was we went. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Shocking. Yeah. Shocking. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Look at yesterday. Mm. Right. The second half. Capitulated. Right. But not just. I don't. You see, you're you're saying it from an English. An English <laughs> yeah. Fan. yeah. Uh, but if you look at server tweaked a little something, yeah. change it was like. Pfft, and they come out, and to be honest, if they took their chances and Harry Kane scores, it could end up 2-2, right? Mm -hmm. It's a good save off Serbian keeper. Mm -hmm. But also, Mitrovic had a good chance. Vlahovic. Uh, Vlahovic as well. Yeah. Like, you understand? So, like, teams teams are very, very good nowadays. But what, just on the structure of the Euros, for me, it's easier to qualify for the Euros now. These days. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because if you... If you 
if you look at it, like you said, it's opening up two more groups. Yeah. And then to come out of the groups is also easier. How many third place go through? I, th- I think it's four. It's, it's got to be four. Yeah, yeah. So only two third place teams don't make it. Which is so it's the majority, and which, so which is wrong. basically everyone. <laughs> did Portugal do that in 2016? I think they did because they they didn't win any group stage. They drew to Hungary three three. I remember and like, to they go drew on and win the whole tournament. And I understand as business, right? As UEFA is. And if you played now, you'd like you'd take advantage of that as a team. Oh, the yeah. Most definitely, yeah. I'm not here criticizing like any player that won't take advantage of it. I'm just saying compared to when we was qualifying, it was literally just good. Even to qualify now, how many third place teams go in there? That, no, that's there, yeah. and uh, I can't, I can't tell you, but there's loads, and they all, they, they get second chances, and it feels like the qualification is happening until the last. And then even the playoffs, you get two games, right? Yeah, yeah. Well, it's over, sec- over two legs. So P- Portugal fin- did finish third in their group. They finished third. They yeah, finished behind, behind Iceland, Iceland and yeah. Hungary. They finished behind, and then they yeah, won that one. one where Iceland had a really good tournament, yeah. right? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. I mean, they got knocked out by by France, who probably should have won that tournament. Yeah, that yeah. Year. I mean, Iceland, they beat England uh, around 16. And yeah. And they got knocked out quarterfinals. Yeah. Yeah, by France. But what a tournament. Wait, but that's yeah. the thing, Iceland. Yeah, what a tournament they had, by I mean, you were talking about, like, the nas- difference between, like, national team and, like, club, like, mm-hmm. on the pitch and, like, the tactics and everything and what it's like. But you were talking earlier about, like, the fans. Is there, like, a difference? Do you, do you find, in, like, how you feel, like, being received by club fans? Then you travel on tournaments and you hear, like, Turkish fans. They're, like, a sense of, like, extra bit of pride with that. But Tur- Turkish fans, right? They make the national team in the stadium feel like you're playing club football. Mm. I think it's one of one of the few that do that. I've been to some places playing national football. And it's, you look around. I'm not like it's, it's it? very um, <coughs> stale. Mm. We went to Wembley. We went to Wembley. Yeah, like last week. Ago, like they lost twice on one nil. Atmosphere was pretty dead. Yeah, they There's were more business. concerned about yeah. throwing paper airplanes on the yeah, pitch yeah. than the actual constantly. game. Yeah, the whole yeah. the whole time, mate. You don't get paper airplanes flying on the pitch. I think if you there. take away, like even Brazil, right? If you take away players and the club fans yeah if you actually go to a Brazilian team national game I ask you the question you look and ask me oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. do you ever hear a national team song no, no I don't, you don't yeah, it's not many they do. don't have one yeah. they don't have one in fact I've got a friend who's Brazilian and Argentinian right his mum's Argentinian and his dad's Brazilian but he's born and grown up in Brazil and he's Argentina Argentina right and, I'm, and, I, and I asked the question, what, bro, how is it possible you just Argentina, bro? And he's like, bro, because when you go to an Argentinian national team game, the amount of songs, it makes you feel like you're in a club, like the, the passion they have. And then I get it because there's so much expat Brazilians, you know, so many different Brazilians around, but they don't have one song to sing together. Where we, When you watch Argentinian games, watch oh, all the fans. Okay, okay. They don't have a national team song like Turkey, we do. We have a few that will sing, all right? That unites people. Do you understand? Yeah, Where yeah, yeah. apart, I'm, remember, I'm not taking out the national team, the national anthem, mm. but like an actual song. England songs, apart from the national anthem, are very like jokey. They're very yeah, like, no, and like, also there's a weird, there's a weird everybody. culture of England fans because you've kind of got like this small kind of core group which go to all the games. <laughs> yeah. Which on the one hand have like this great rep of like supporting the nation, but on the other hand, we go to a tournament and ruin it for everyone else. But like, <laughs> but like, you've also got like we went last week. You'll have like one section of people who will bring everything else and then you've got the people who will just tag along mm. but like you, then you've got other countries where like they're in a tournament and the country's all in like mm. everyone's invested yeah I think if you see there's a, there's a few countries like that so if you look at you got Turkey right it's like no matter who goes everyone knows the motive <laughs> <laughs> no matter who goes it don't matter if you're a 70 year old woman 5 year old kid or a middle-aged man, like everybody knows the motive, right? And then I think you got you got Serbia's like that. Yeah. Yeah. Well, Netherlands. I, I think they've got some. De- I think they've got some decent support. Tell me if that's a whole. I mean, you see yesterday, and you just see. I, I always love it when you see like nations or even club football, and you look at a fan section, and it's just all one, one colour, like that, all dressed in orange. And it's like just it. like yeah. I never like, Holland. They got good fans, yeah. and I know that personally. Like they got some. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. do you know, is the word really hooligans anymore? But they, they I don't know. <laughs> it's a bit late for that. Now. Yeah, no, but they, they say it in a different way to our English, you know. So yeah, they yeah. have some real fanatic hooligans. I played I played against them though in Ajax Stadium, so it was kind of different. Yeah. It's kind of quiet a little bit. Really? Oh, Ajax? Yeah, because Ajax is, is is great team. Uh, historically amazing. Yeah. But I just think now it's it's a lot of 
touristic as well. Oh yeah. So you get a lot of fans that are in there that might not be Ajax fans, but they're coming to the Ajax stadium to watch Ajax. Like, do you get what I'm saying? I would. Yeah. I mean, to be fair, I want to do that. Yeah. <laughs> that is on the list. I, I would. Yeah. yeah I yeah. would as well. Do you know? It's not me dissing the team. But it's an amazing club. Mm. Like amazingly well run footballs out of this world. Who yeah, they yeah. create, right? But I think if you go watch a final game inside the stadium, it's very, very different. Right, okay. You understand what I mean? So In what? the cup, crazy, bro. Like, like it's, it's nice. Like, do you get what I'm saying? Well, you thrive um, on that, though. It's not, that doesn't take it away from you at all. You thrive on, like, a... Not me, not being like hostile, but an environment. Where no, it's I like, like it. Oh, you like it. I love it. Which I, I love, that like, I love it. Which I that like impacts your performance sometimes. Like having like an intense atmosphere like helps you. I can imagine that. Like it definitely does. Like I I I thrive off the the the, the fan engagement. Yeah. Like I've never I've never understood why people have a problem. Or oh, so listen to how crazy this is. Something happens. Footballer gets into an argument, not into an argument, but he's going back and forth with you, right? And everyone the next day is saying, well, the footballer should know better. Why? Because he's a footballer. Yeah. Well, you're a 30-year-old man as well. <laughs> How does that make sense? Yeah. So, because I'm a footballer, I naturally should be a better person. Yeah. Well, that doesn't make no sense, yeah. right? So, I'm not going to the extent of the footballers, like, swearing and, like, there's certain people watching and whatever. But I mean, like, fan engagement, like, huh? What? Yes. Oh, whatever. Like, but I like that. I like that. That's that's yeah. that's how it should be. Is it, is Do you know it, what I mean? You're I'm trying to get the edge. Also, for me, it's like the engagement. It's like, you know when you're a player and there's always somebody that you can hear. Right. There's well, somebody, man. right? And you look at it and you're like, and it just gets them. Yeah, like, yeah. Yeah, I got, I got my man. Do you know what I'm trying to say? Mm. Like, it's like, for me, every team that I played against, fans hated me. And they're supposed to. They're supposed to. Otherwise, I'm not doing my job properly. Like me, myself, how I used to play, how I used to be physical and and make fouls on purpose and try and beat up the defender. So 20 minutes later into the game, I'm able to get certain opportunities, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. Fans don't like, or the other team don't like it, but every fans that I played for who supported my team, they loved it, they understood. They understood the motive. They understand what I mean? What, like, and winding, I know everyone keeps their cool, they were professionals, but like, winding up another player and getting in their head as well. But does that does that afford you better opportunities later in the game? If you've got well, I, mean, I think if you look at yesterday, I think Jude what did he do? Kind of barged the guy. Yeah, of course he yeah. got subbed off about ten minutes later. But what I'm saying that's like letting him so they've kicked him three, four times, right? And I saw I heard I think it was Alan Shearer say, Oh, he's, he shouldn't have done that but he's been kicked three, four, five times. You can mm. see he's been targeted a little bit like let's try and get into him, which is hundred percent right by the way. Yeah. yeah? But he's let he's let he's let he's let him know. Listen, I'm here, bro. I'm here. I feel like that's what you did. Of course, game, yeah. because if you if you're, I know everybody's a big player on that England team, hmm. but who's kind of the man is Jude right now? Yeah, yeah, yeah. If you're seeing him get beat up and him like, now you, they might be thinking, right? They've got to Jude, you know. Yeah. So now when you see Jude like. No, yeah. That's that's yeah. my guy. Where all the all the fans erupted when he did that. When Do you he, see what he, I'm saying? Shoulder yeah. Yeah. Right? Pitch, yeah. And he did it just enough. Yeah. It was just perfect. Boom, done. No booking, nothing serious. That's how it is. Like, and, and do you know what that sends as well? The next game when he plays against whoever it is and the next game, like, yo, you know what? That that kicking thing, he's not only good tech, he's here and here, he's there. He's taking and pressure. he shows something, because you show that in the clip, and the manager might spin it like, look, if we get into him, this is what can happen. He can, might get a red card, but I don't think so. No. All right, so group stage, easy. Smash through that. Slight blip in the first game, but we're through, all right, okay? Quarter finals. Who's that? Turkey. Okay, we're talking about Turkey. <laughs> yeah. That because he said we. Oh, yeah. <laughs> okay. yeah. By the way, yeah. Turkey, is your mum Turkish? Yeah, right. I'm, I'm, Turkish. I'm, I'm Turkish for this podcast. Oh, no, went, yeah. went Turkish, Turkey a couple of weeks yeah, ago. I'm, That's. I'm, I'm a native. That's it. Yeah. <laughs> no, no, I'm not at all. But I'm, I'm, I'm Turkish for this podcast. It, then you got Croatia. In that the, was a tough game. I mean, I'm seeing on it now. That's Modric. That's Luka Modric's first tournament mm. in international football. What a player! But that you win that on penalties. 3-1 in the end and forgive me did you take a penalty? No, nah, I got what? taken off before the extra time Okay, oh. so I wasn't on the pitch otherwise I would have definitely Why was that game so crazy? Because it was like no matter what we did they, they matched us yeah. or, or better to be fair during the 90 minutes they was the better team they got the same heart like us you know they're, they're the Balkans as you know them, them guys hearts are like second to none man. guys that are from the Balkans grew up in the Balkans football mm -hmm. players tough tough people tough people tough mentality not afraid not afraid to lose. You understand that? Yeah. 
That's something that people don't understand. That's where people sometimes feel. It's because they're afraid to yeah. lose. Do they kind of like emphasize their own like creativeness and how they want to play over like another tactical? Side yeah, over than the team that they're playing. Yeah, it's yeah. like more of what can we do? Yeah, I remember we had Slovan Bilic as well. That was was that that was his first tournament yeah. as well. I mean, I mean, I'm looking at Rakitic and Modric and stuff. Oh god, man, crazy! And look at their striker. I bet you don't remember him. You're too young. Yeah, well, yeah, Who was this? Hamburg legend. Is it Olic? Olic. Olic. Right. Oh, okay. You don't know him, do No. <laughs> <laughs> He was an absolute yeah. bruiser. Mm. Absolute, man. They, yeah, they had an insane team. Who else did they have? They've got Serna as well. Yeah. Oh, cool. that's, that's a legend. That's, uh, what that's the easy. Look, look, Pjanic. But CC Serna now, he's in charge of everything at like Shakhtar Donetsk right now. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. He took it on. And he was playing. Well. He was playing until he's like, not old. Yeah, but he was, was quality. Yeah. Technical. Real that's cultured and technically gifted, yeah, man. That's the word. And and that penalty shootout, what was it like? The nerves of it and everything. Like, had you... Well, I went on the pitch to be honest. But you're being on the sidelines. Side is that yeah. worse? Is that I, knowing I, I, you can't do it. I knew we'd win that. Really? Oh. Yeah, because we broke their heart like 93rd minute semi, and and the goal was crazy. Yeah, yeah, hundred and <laughs> what was it? Sorry, no, no, no. sorry. Listen to this, right? They're in. So it's nil nil, full yeah. time. Yeah, going no, to, going it's to, crazy. Going to, going to extra time, <laughs> and obviously you're, you're getting given everything. It's, it's tense. Croatia score in the 119th minute. You got one minute left of normal time. Three minutes later, in the 122nd, Turkey equalised. No, surely you like, can man, see. It was a volley, crazy. Like, mm. It was mental, and I just knew from that their hearts were broken <coughs> from that minute. You know, because you just tell them like body language. Body language. They just dropped to the floor. You can see with one minute to go, and that's like you spoke about like never say die actually, but this is the emphasis of it. Like this is the pinnacle. You can see with one minute to go, <laughs> and you still come back, and you still grab an equaliser. Yeah. Listen, I told you we we, we was that tournament. We was built different. Yeah, like, that was. And for me, it was like a becoming of age as well after that tournament because it's really like, oh my god, like this is what goes on. Like these, this is crazy. Mm. Do you know what I mean? And then that's why I think when we went out, when we then got to the semis, yeah. we went out against Germany. You got to remember we had thirteen players, really? so we had eleven starting and only two that could play on the bench. Everyone else was suspended and injured. Oh my god. And you still, and that game as well, oh. semi final. So you, you, you're through the court finals, right? Semi finals. I just start that as well. I'm watching back these highlights. But I watch back as much as it, of it as I could find. You should have scored. You should have scored early oh, on. Like, you had an that, you had an insane start to the game. It's crazy. You were, honestly, yeah, I had three shots. I had three shots in the first yeah. 20 minutes. Hit the bar twice. Okay, Take, we scored off it. Taking on Jens Lehmann 40 yards out. Yeah. <laughs> Not bothered. Nah. <laughs> See, when you're like 19, 20, you don't really have that fear. You just do. It's like when you start becoming older, it's not that you have fear, because I've never been scared of anything, but you understand what it takes yeah. a little more and what it's going to take. So you, questions start creeping in. When you're young, you don't know what to expect. It's like... You haven't had all of the context, yeah, everything. Yeah. Would you say that's like the best players? You're almost kind of right away from the fear and they just kind of still have that, yeah. just absolutely go at it mentality. A million percent. Million percent. That's why mentality, mentality is the most important thing. I saw Mourinho talk about it like these last few weeks. The best skill, but it's this is exactly how he said it. The best skill, but it's not a skill, is mentality. That's what he said, right? <laughs> you know, it's just funny the way he says yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. But take what he said is a hundred percent. Like, if you look at all the top players in the world. Are they athletically gifted like that? Really? Not now, because now is really you athletic are, yeah, based, yeah. and it you really need that. But if you look at before. The, the kind of players like, and then this is going to sound rid ridiculous, but like Ronaldinho wasn't in like the best physical shape, was he? But he's one of the best players of all time. Well, Ronaldinho is the most talented yeah. professional footballer we've ever had. I don't want to say, prof but I don't want to say footballer because of some guys that never made it that might have been yeah, just yeah, as yeah, talented. Yeah. But yeah. professional footballer we've ever had is Ronaldinho. Easy, and I think it's easy. Mentality. That's the thing. You that's know, thing. and that's the only reason why people, when they talk about him, they don't put him there. But I put him there. Man. He changed football, he evolved football. He was able to take from everybody that he saw in Brazil and make it his. You know, like the Elastico, he was from H Hivalina. Yeah. You understand what I mean? Like, he made it his adverts, he made it his. Okay, Edgar Davids and them guys were doing adverts way before Ronaldinho. But everyone would still, yeah. Ronaldinho, oh, nine. Like, do you know what I mean? So, yeah, so mentality, we went into that after that group, like, thinking, yo, Smash Germany. Really? Yeah. 
And they got players like Schweinsteiger, Lahm. They're early on in their career. Schweinsteiger. But those yeah. was on fire. Yeah. As well. Was that Joachim Lowe? Was they yeah, just yeah, started yeah. there? Yeah, well, yeah. he's he's managing this tournament. Mm. They got like uh, Miroslav Klose as well. Like it was a big Germany team. They yeah, had um, Jens Lehmann in goal. Yeah. Yeah, Podolski, Balak Klose. starting behind Klose. Klose. Crazy, Klose. crazy, yeah. crazy game. Yeah. What a team as well. So yeah, <laughs> three <laughs> shots from yourself in the opening minutes. First one long range. Second one you hit the bar. Yeah. Crazy chance. And then it's the, the the goal. It's pretty much your goal. To be fair, you yeah, make it happen. I always see. I watched it the other day, and I just wish that would have went in. Man. Honestly, I wished it would have went in. But we scored from it. It was nice. Yeah. He ran off like he scored a word in the world. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, he scored like if against Germany. <laughs> nah, but you know, it was great. You know, and what people don't know, you know, after that game, we all got um, we all got like you know you know stamps. Mm. So we all got stamps with our face on it. Like national stamps. Right. Okay. Ah, I see. Right, yeah. right. So your 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 face is being posted around in left on left. Yeah. Exactly. Wow, yeah. that's crazy. So like, so yeah. So you know you look at Royal Mail stamps yeah, with yeah, the Queen, yeah. right? Colin Castle. So yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you could go in and say, right, I want an Ardu to that stamp, or I want a Colin Castle stamp, whatever it so might. So that's be. how you create the <laughs> environment. That's how you create the passion. Man, it was crazy the when I when I got that. I was like. Oh, okay, <laughs> I still got my own. I never, yeah, I, I never yeah. stamped one. Oh, oh. I, got the whole, yeah, I got the whole pack. You gotta send us a picture. Oh, I'll send a picture. <laughs> I'll get it out. I'll to. get it out. Not send. I haven't sent one of them. No, nah. 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 not even to your mum. Like my birthday, my face. No, I give my mum, my mum and dad some. Yeah, but yeah. I've, I've got the whole. Tell you what, if you're ever a manager and you're like, I don't know, it's a bit old school approach, but you find a player you want, send them a letter, put your stamp. <laughs> <laughs> that, 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 that's yeah. like a Jose Mourinho yeah, mistake. Yeah, when doors. you're recruiting, <laughs> that would be crazy. So you have that lead against Germany, and coming off of what you said, you thought you were going to batter them. You have that lead. Surely, in that moment, you're thinking, this is ours. This is our game. No, don't say that. He said we thought we was going to batter them like that. No, no, no. Okay. I just yeah. thought yeah. We, we went into that mission like, like, we're the guys. Yeah, yeah. Like, we went through, so we went, what? Czech Republic, which was mad, we didn't even talk about that game, sorry, right? Sorry. Oh, yeah, yeah. Czech Republic, where Volkan <laughs> headbutted Jan Kohler. Did you know that? No. He headbutted, like, you, you remember the Matarazzi, yeah? Yeah, yeah that, that damn... same, same thing, headbutted Jan Kohler. <laughs> got sent off. So it was 10 man and we won that game, right? <laughs> then we went into the Croatia game. They give, they, they, they were better than us, mm. but we managed to find a way. And then we were just like, yo, we believed it was our time, like, yo. You feel invincible in yeah, and I yeah. honestly, this is what people don't understand yet. I honestly believe if we would have got through that game, yeah, play Spain, even though Spain is amazing, yeah. best team in the tournament, hands down, we would have done because they got smashed in it. Germany, they got mm -hmm. was it like 3 0? Yeah, 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 I think so. Or yeah, something yeah. like that. Mm -hmm. They want they want to beat us like that, yeah. they want to beat us like that. So, but it wasn't meant to be, but it was a great tournament, you know, sometimes in in in. In losses, because officially we lost, you you become winners, isn't it? Yeah, you understand? Yeah. And you, you, you learn a lot of life lessons and a lot of things that carry you through, so it was amazing. I'm Turkish for this podcast, but as a neutral, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> for, for watching that, you like that that was Turkey's game. That was like, you, you, for me, you dominated that game and you had the better chances. It was just like, it, it, uh, it, it's kind of like it's quite crushing when you watch it back and you think when that moment happened with Philip Lahm. I think you're, so Philip Lahm has it. This is 2-2. Two -two. I've got to go on to it now. I've got to go on to it. But first, why don't you talk about Rustu's mistake? Oh, okay. 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 Yeah. Go on, go on, go. And then no, he wants to come mistake. on to my... Like, is it, is it nah, your I'm mistake? Joking. Is it your nah, mistake? Nah, but as, as well, we gifted them a goal in it. Rustu would come out yeah, and yeah, 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 closer, yeah. just yeah, yeah. tapped it in. Yeah. yeah. Rustu Sorry. Arby. I'll explain. So, you, yeah, take, take the lead. Schweinsteiger equalises. That's a nice goal, to be fair to him. Yeah, first shot they had. Mm. It's a decent finish though. That was a, it was a good goal. That was a good goal. <laughs> the, uh, they then take the lead through Mirosaf Klosa. It's, yeah, the goalkeeper. Yeah, he should have caught it. He should have caught it. Closer headers it in. But you equalise 86th minute. Still going, fighting spirit. And then it's, so, and I've got, I've got, I've got, I've got to play this one right. Because it's not, it's not a mistake. It's not a mistake. It's a bad <laughs> That is, a, it's a mistake. Right, okay, okay. Oh, so, okay. Mistake. so Lam is, Lam is. Lam it, is what? He, well, I'm trying to say where he is. He's like near the halfway line. No, I mean, what is Lam though? What position wise? Yeah. yeah. Well, he's right like back, but what is he? He's, he's in everything. Isn't he? he's, but he's, what foot is he? Right foot. So it's a mistake by me because well, I knew let that. Him cut inside. Ah. I let him cut inside. Mm. That, and that's what I'm saying to you. That second of, because if I would have just shown him down the line, I'm not saying he wouldn't have gone down and crossed it and he would have scored. It would have been much difficult, or he would have probably just passed it off or whatever. And you've got more chance of getting in a decent challenge on him. If he's yeah, he couldn't run past me at that age. He could yeah. never have run past me like that. He wouldn't have been able to get away. And I probably would have stopped it anyway. Mm -hmm. But through the second of 
not concentrating, not focusing, not understanding. Because we've been drilled over it. It's not the coach's fault. We've been drilled all over it. I knew. I know Lam's right footed. Okay, he can use his left foot, but he's right footed. Yeah? And I let him come in. Even though I did twist my ankle. <laughs> <laughs> that's all right. Yeah, but like, to be fair, that's a massive, like, that just goes to show one second of misconcentration. Like, that's that, I mean, that's game, top football, isn't it? Tournament. Exactly. And that, even though he didn't come inside and hit it top corner, even yeah. though he made a bounce, <coughs> whatever, whatever, yeah. I was still, it still led from me not closing him down. Probably. There was many moments from that attack where other players could have come in, but yeah, it started from... Still think he should have kicked the ball out though. Yeah. yeah. So is that, are you still standing by I'm that? I'm standing by that. So you go down, he just like breezes on, because Colin goes down, Lam's got like, what, 20 yards, or just free space to But run. it's not like he's, come, I've gone down, he's come inside and he's hit it on the 18 yard box. No, 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 it's not close. There was a few seconds there. There's a few seconds, bro. Yeah, there's a good 10 <laughs> seconds there. I, I wouldn't have kicked it out, so. <laughs> so you're attracting that now. Yeah. So you I'm, you, I'm just saying, I wouldn't have kicked it out, I, I understand. <laughs> no, but it comes from me not shining down, bro. No, yeah. That's where it comes from. Even though that whole game, I thought like I, 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 I was giving it to them, man. Yeah, no. Like, personally, and even after the game, like Podolski came up to me and stuff like that. But that's what makes you great. You know what I mean? And that's why I say like, like it's so much respect for like Allison, Ederson. They play in teams that absolutely dominate, and then that one second that they needed, they're there. Yeah. Do you understand what I mean? Because. That's the difference. You have to be on it constantly. Constantly. Hey, it's, do, you, do you look back at that game with, with frustration or just pride of the whole tournament as well? Both. Like, yeah. Both. No regret. But just imagine. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? You say them to penalties, you're winning there. So I, I, I think so. I think we would have beat them an extra time. Yeah, 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 yeah. I don't think anyone was... They, they definitely wasn't expecting a game like that. No. Like, they definitely wasn't. But again, one, one second of... No concentration. So what happens when you play at the top. You're in the semi-finals of the Euros. Yeah. You know, you're not playing against like no disrespect. Some other net. You're playing against Germany, World Cup winners, winning leagues, Champions League, done it. Know how to do it. And Germany, like we said, are very regimented. If that was another team, I don't even think Lam would be dribbling there. They might no. just listen. It's two-two right mm. now. It's ninety nine. What, what minute was it? Eighty-seven. Ninety. What, Lam yeah. scored in the ninetieth. Ninetieth minute. L let's see it at. Yeah. We take. Do you understand? Not not Germany. No. It's like when we're in position, we're doing it. Do you know yeah. what I mean? No, it was overall though. What a tournament? Like to to. Yeah, it was a crazy tournament. Yeah, we got to quickly move on to Euro twenty twenty four. Turkey, they're in they're in this summer's tournament. The first question I want to ask: there is a potential for them to come up against Germany in this tournament. Their revenge would be nice. <laughs> <laughs> would be nice, but um, <laughs> it would be difficult. They haven't played Germany since then. In the not in a major tournament, no, no. qualifiers they have. I don't know, the, the Turkish team has some talented players these yeah. days. You don't see them reaching the semi-finals though, right? Just, uh, just I don't see it. I don't, I, it just all depends who they get coming out of the group. Depends where they come in the group as well. Can I ask, what is, because obviously Turkey in the last couple of tournaments haven't been, I mean, they weren't at the World, the World Cup. The Euros before that was a disappointing tournament for them. What is the difference between the two, the two sides? Is it a mentality difference? Is yeah. it? Because these players have ability as well, but I think I think I think coach, right. coach as well. Yeah, that's a big factor. Structure in the coaching, mm -hmm. like for example, the logistics. You know, um, the philosophy, as in, like we just said, the mindset you put in the players in what's acceptable, what's not acceptable. Um, the structure of the team. I think if you look over it, it's very the structures change all the time. Like right now. And a little bit of we've got to understand this is a new generation, and too much of the culture of Turkish, Turkish culture is in the football, as well. Yeah. So like you see, you see, uh, I give it to you. You see how Jude has been put into the to call the leaders group. Yeah, you'd never find that in Turkish football. What, a Twenty year old, well, yeah. I'm thirty five, bro. Yeah, You're crazy. Do you understand? Yeah, I think yeah. that's what needs to change a little bit. Arda Guler will maybe thrive off it, or Kenan will maybe thrive off having that little bit more responsibility. But it doesn't happen like that because of Turkish culture. Who's your elder is... That's, is, that, that's an important thing, though. Like, what, it's very important. You're saying that's not in the national team now? Or? No, it is. Whoever is... Like, for example, Jude, if he was t if he was Turkish, would never be put into the leaders' group because he's too young. And you got mm. a player like that who needs to be able to let flourish. Like, Make that decisions. Hinder him, yeah? And be able to have a say. Mm. You understand? Yeah. And in Turkish football, it, it doesn't really matter too much. It's 
you're my abim, I'm your yeah. abby. That's it. Even when we cross the white line. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah, 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 which is a beautiful thing, right? <laughs> of course. You know, like, but football's football. When you're going in white lines, don't matter your age, we're all the same. Yeah, I have a respect for you as in, you know, like, for example, Rushdu Abi, I would never scream and shout in front of all the cameras at him, right? Mm-hmm. But when we go into the changing room, I'm able to talk to him like, listen, Abi, you're killing me, right? I need to, you need to be, you need to come out, whatever it might be. But there's no chance I'm telling you. Do as I say. Yeah. That's it. You understand? And the thing is, if you look at Fatty Terran, everybody would think that he was like that, right? He wasn't. For the, I feel like Fatty Terran, like, that can be like a whole nother, like, yeah. Ah, like, oh, man, we, we definitely will be. We <laughs> should do a I mean, section. Yeah, Jack, we need to do a whole podcast on him. With, with the whole like management side of things, like obviously, because you've done international football, you've done, you've done, you know, obviously club football, and you're saying management's so crucial at the international stage. What do you think is like the key difference between like the management styles? Because obviously, you don't get much time no, you don't, with no. your group. So, yeah. you know, is it? I mean, I think from the fan perspective, we always kind of view it as like, is it a more simplistic job? Because they kind of the tactic can't be. You don't have too much time to to brief and everything. So. For me, the man. So, so this is the difference for me. You know, like sometimes in club football, you can kind of test things out. Mm. That didn't really work, but yeah. you know what? I change it around. For me, in 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 international football, you need to make the best eleven, and they play. You don't get a chance for mistakes. You, you don't really have much chance for mistakes, mm. right? So, team selection is very important, and trying to fit everybody in doesn't work. Who needs to play plays? That's it. That's and that's the prestige of being able to play for your national team. Not everybody can. Mm-hmm. So why try and fit everybody in? And why try you fitting people in in positions they're not played all year? Just because they've had a good season, or like yeah, or just because they're a big name. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. So I'll give you an example. Phil Foden playing on the left yesterday. Oh. And this is nothing. Phil Foden is top three player in the Prem right now. Yeah. But why are we playing Phil Foden on the left? So who's supposed to play on the left? Can't do a better job than Phil Foden. And you've got two players down the left that are playing out of position. Who goes on the left, sorry, instead of Foden for you? Rashford, should he have been on the plane? No, I'm not going to say who said that his team selection is his team selection. Yeah. But who we got, who, who's England got there right now? Like, Palmer, is, like Gordon, Palmer. You could play Palmer. Mm. For me, Palmer should have played. For him, not even get on. Yeah, yeah. Yeah? All right? You even got Eze. Actually, yeah. Yeah, yeah. He'll do a job. He'll do a job. Eze can do a job there, yeah, but. Class. Let's take Eze out because everyone's going to go, oh my God, you just said mm. players playing out of position, and even Palmer. Mm. Yeah? But then you've got um, my man from Gordon. Yeah. yeah. I yeah? spot. So, what I'm saying to you is, is that in international football, okay, Foden's the biggest star and has been the better player. Yeah. Right? But we're trying to make him. When, when, all right, let me ask you a question. When has Foden played well playing on the left Obviously. for club or national team? Yeah. He's a total different player, right? Yeah. And it's okay to say that. It's perfectly fine yeah. for everybody to say that. But at this moment in time, I think Saka's got that position cemented, right? Yeah. So unless he plays 10, like Foden on the left is not Phil Foden. No. Mm. So what somebody who's supposed to play left, who plays left, can <coughs> give you is probably more than what Foden can give you from playing off the left. But that doesn't mean that like Foden, so like say Foden doesn't start, that doesn't mean he can't come on later in the game. No, yeah, exactly. Yeah, thing, you know? Because I think you, I think, so, so they did it well with having Jude still in his same position yesterday. So my thing was, where's Foden going to play? I, I didn't think Foden was going to go on the left because I was like, it's not the same player, right? And I still, even though they won, I don't think particularly that he had a great game. No. Do you know what I mean? So going back to the question, mm. that is the main thing, is yeah. playing people in their positions to get the best out of them. You have to do that. You might have done that. Like Southgate might have done that mm. for Foden if he was the manager of Man City for two games. All right, let's see either. Yeah. But in international football, you don't really, <coughs> especially in tournament based, you don't really have that time to do that. Yeah. Southgate takes a long time to experiment. And then kind yeah. of like when, yeah. It takes, about, it takes about a year to get a player kind of into the squad embedded until they, they actually start starting games, unless if they're Jude Bellingham. You know. Foden for me has always been a little bit like, it seems like quite average for England. He's not an average player, but like for, no. for England, don't think we've utilised him. Not in tournaments. To the best, like it, personally. But Yeah, well, he's not been used to the best, no, right? No. Which is, again, fine to say. Still a great player. Yeah. Yeah, he is. And he has been for Man City, right? The problem is he's not going to play on the right unless... Saka's what injured or whatever it might be, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. At this moment in time. Yeah. Okay. 
Why do we keep trying to push this narrative of playing left wing? It's almost like I know like Trent can play midfield now, but was it is that sort of the same kind of thing? Like you got Trent and Walker. God, like I can't both playing both of them right back. Well, but Trent's playing. done well every time of he's course, played centre course. midfield, and he can adapt as well. Like, like he played well yesterday. Yeah, but still, you got you got Menu. Yeah, for me personally, <laughs> this, this this boy needs to play. Yeah, like he needs to play. I agree. I agree. Like he needs to play. <laughs> like the, yeah. the positions he picks up, mm-hmm. yeah, and the ball retention and, and his distribution and ex- execution of play is crazy. The positioning, mm-hmm. right? So Declan, Mainu, 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 yeah. Bellingham. Yeah. That's your team. That's my midfield. Yeah. And then uh, I'd play Cole Palmer on the left. <sighs> no? No, no, no. I get it. It's just like hard saying no phone, but like the logic completely. Like it's completely fair. But, but let's not let's not make it a no folding, please. No, it's not like a no folding. Like, I don't like, want it to be a narrative of no folding, in it. No, but like it, I mean, if we were in, if we were a newspaper, that that's the headline. But like yeah. you know, like it's just Colin Casemiro. It's just hard. Foden. Yeah, <laughs> like it's nah, like not at all. No, not, not I, know. At all. I mean, it's a bit similar to like England of old. Like you see, like the golden era and stuff. I mean, that didn't win anything. But you had like. Gerard Lampard skulls, skulls and Skulls has to go on the wing. This is my, this <laughs> like, is what I'm saying, and this is what I'm trying to explain. That's what I'm trying to explain, like why England for me hasn't been able to win because we're always trying to fit the names in. Yeah, you understand what I'm saying? Yeah, sometimes and, you just got to be ruthless, and if there's not, there, and that's that, it. Yeah. And I think Southgate has done it. He's done it well, right? We've yeah. been to the finals, semi-finals, whatever it might be. But you're asking the question in national football: What do I think? That has to part to play in it, big part, but also managing people. You're gonna be around. People are gonna be away from their families. You're around them 24/7. That that's gonna be hard. That's that's also a major factor. Turkey at this tournament. Like, have you got have you got a kind of a prediction in your head? Where do you think they're coming? You think it's? I think just come out of the group. Yeah. Plus, if they come out of the group second, they're gonna get someone like France. Turkey got I France. Don't, I don't these see days. them being. <laughs> well, no. I mean, you look at the last tournament, and what was it? I think. Like France went into that world world champions, like they got Mbappe, and then they have that game against that mental game against Switzerland. And the thing is, it is knockout, not in knockout football. Like it's just okay. it's yeah, one off games. Switzerland always do work tournaments, you know. Go I mean, oh wait, I mean, uh, you know, can they? Because obviously, like, if we talk about the key players, like like Chad Loglu, yeah. like, he's been everywhere. He's been playing in Europe for years. Like Ooh. players like that around, Ooh. and obviously you don't have like. I'm not sure. I'm not sure about the coach though. No, no. Something new for him. Okay. New, as in you know, he's not. It's not Turkish either. Right, okay. Do, do you, know, you prefer that when they, they, they're the home nation? Nah, not, not, I think, not when you're main, if you're mainland Europe, maybe not. But there's so much layers of, like, being Turkish for What I'm trying to explain is this, look, there's already an internal difference of the Turkish boys that are born abroad and the Turkish boys that are born in Turkey. And then now you've got a foreign coach as well right. who don't really know too much. Not too much. He does. He knows lots. He's actually a very good coach. I think he's a very good coach. What he did at Adana was very good. But it's a different level now going to to Turkey. And you're at risk, think, sorry, you're at risk of like losing that Turkish like spirit. Yeah, that- because people will say, "Well, but Gus Hiddink, Gus Hiddink was Gus Hiddink." Yeah, yeah. You understand what I mean? <coughs> so it's not me saying it's only because he's not Turkish. I think he hasn't had enough experience as well. Like Gus Hiddink was after winning Premier Leagues and da 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 and whatever it might be. You understand? So I think, yeah, I don't know, they find it difficult. France, I think France are on a mission as well. Is there anyone in that Turkish squad, though, that you, I mean, like, yeah, there's, there's plenty of names, but um, if you could pick one player that you really like the look of, that you think might have a very good tournament? Yeah, everyone knows. I think Arda Guler is going to have a good tournament because I think international football suits his style of football. You know, it's not as intense, you know, like club football. It's not as aggressive. Yeah. Sometimes it's stop starting. He's going to have, he's going to find different spaces on the pitch. He, you will be able to dictate games at his tempo. Do you understand? So I think he's different one. Uh, Kenan is also another one. Mm. It's a bit more. It's a bit more. Uh, well, you know. Okay. Um, but but well, Hakan, depending on the role that he has, is he going to play DM? Is he going to play eight? Depending on that role. Yeah. Because I think he can naturally play as a DM. He won't be an aggressive. He might be like a Pirlo kind of DM. Yeah, yeah. Dictate. Yeah, like dictate. G- Gerard was like in late like, stages. Yeah. Yeah, and I, and I think he can do that well because he can use both feet. Plus, he's dead ball specialist as well. Mate, I got a stat right here. Like, so you chatting only once area last season. Since the start of 2013-14, no other player in Europe's top five leagues, apart from Lionel Messi, has scored more direct free kicks. Crazy, mate. I'm saying to you. So I mean, if you've seen like the videos as well, like, because they're not like 
they're, they're not like the ones right from on the edge of the box. Every I time. think it's before he no, went to Labour. Like yeah. the, I think it was when he was at Hamburg. I Hamburg, think the one from, the one from Dortmund. Yeah. yeah, it's mental. Yeah, yeah, crazy. No, no, no. He's, he's a nice guy as well, man. Is he? Yeah, real nice guy. Real nice guy. I think, but I think what he's able to do because he was never projected to do that. What he's able to do with his career is something that you have to really um, give credit to. Yeah. He's understood his niche, he's understood his role, he's, he's become a big player now. This he don't win two Italian leagues. No. Mm. Do you know what I mean, bro? Especially as, as, as people like to say Turkish players don't travel well. Do you know what I mean? He clearly does. He clearly does. <laughs>